so, so stu I, I, stupid. I, I just can't. The incentive structure on each side to have this drag this long. That's my. Everybody's so an stupid. idiot here. Everybody's Everybody, an idiot. What do, everyone's made their points. We've had the yeah. trade request. We had the Jets do their public statement. Preseason's just about over. Why there's in any reason in the world he would not be signed the day after the Giants preseason game so he has two full weeks to be ready for week one is just beyond me and a failure on both sides. I'm not fully blaming the Jets. I'm no, not fully neither. I'm blaming it's, Reddick. It's, it's both. Just, it's just both. And it's all this is frustrating. This is just pure fan venting that they need this guy. He is a difference maker. He is one of the 10 most valuable players on the roster, as we talked about uh, in the pod that released yesterday. And to just have this be a thing that drags into the season where if God forbid they lose it, and it's not, look, they could very well lose the Niners game and still start six and two. If you look at their first eight games, so it's not the end of the world. They lose the Niners game, but let's say they lose the Niners game 17, 16. If there's one pass rush rep, they don't get home in the fourth quarter. That's all we're going to talk about. And then all the, all the leverage is going to go back to Reddick. Or on the other hand, Brock Purdy has an ugly game because IU and Trent Williams don't play. And the Jets just, their defense dominates and they win 20 to 10. And it's like, oh, we don't need Reddick. Like, forget it. It was like, you're still probably going to need him. It might might not turn up until three weeks from now, but you still need him. So you still need, like get it done. You need Hassan Reddick. The goal, the, the goal isn't to just be able to, you know, beat the Vikings and Broncos and the Patriots <laughs> early in the year. The goal is to beat the Texans. The goal is to beat Buffalo twice. The goal is to win the AFC right. East. Win the like, division. Make a run at, yeah, make a run at the Chiefs. To Maybe, do uh, that. Try to make a Super Bowl? Is yeah, to do that. Too, like, could they, too bold? Could the Jets make the playoffs without Reddick? Of course. Are they going to win the division and win a playoff game without him? It's going to be a lot harder. A lot harder. So I, I'm just pissed off and not feeling good that it's going to be resolved soon, which may mean nothing because both of us thought this would be done by now. And it's not, they can very well just, it takes one meeting and one conversation to get this done. It's not, I'm sure each side has the terms and needs to budge a little bit. It does. It's starting to feel more of like week one energy, not the last day of August energy, which sucks I, I, are you getting any other kind of vibe on the situation i'm not and these things can always surprise you because people forget sometimes we put these you know everybody involved in these scenarios on on higher ground but they are humans and humans have emotions and act in odd ways and it's it's like anything if you fight with somebody and then you decide later that night yeah you know what i'm not that man anymore let's just get over this it's that's why it's hard to always have a, a long-term outlook on it. Like if the long-term outlook on it, I agree with you. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem like it's going anywhere because it hasn't. The only thing I could say is if we're looking for a glass half full and why I've been very, I've been a little bit more pro Reddick in this than pro jets because the jets put themselves in a situation that everybody seemed to be aware of, but the jets, but now at this point in the venture, I've really balanced it out where it's also Reddick and his team's fault, who have not handled this well at all. Number one, I never understood why they didn't do a hold in. I never understood it. You avoid the fines. You're around the team. The vibes are good. You, the Jets whole like obnoxious, stupid show up and we'll talk thing. I never agreed with that for a guy that's had four double digit sack things, but if Reddick did show up, he would have avoided the fines for himself and maybe conversations would have gotten somewhere. If Robert Sala is standing on the sideline every day talking to son Reddick in street clothes, maybe Sala marches up to the front office or goes to Woody and says, like, we got to get this done. Like, this guy's here. Let's get this done. There's When nobody's involved face to face, it really changes things. The reason I, I have put some harsh blame on the Jets for the last month is because, once again, they traded for him. It wasn't solved before the trade. And on the flip side of it, Reddick is learning the harsh reality as his trade request it came down. Nobody wanted to trade for Hassan Reddick and pay him, you know, a little south of thirty million dollars a year. We go, we did this whole thing with the Daniel Hunter deal, right? Daniel Hunter got two yep. years, forty nine million, forty eight guaranteed. Nobody wanted to do that. Nobody wanted to trade for Reddick and pay that. Daniel Hunter walked in for agency and signed that deal with a coach that obviously loves him for his scheme. Nobody wanted to trade an asset and give Reddick that deal. And it sounded like Reddick want, maybe wanted more. So when you factor in all of that, Reddick has overplayed his hand here. Yep. And where Reddick is now foolish in this is 
free agency is a numbers game, whether you believe it or not. And I think the sports as a whole are getting better because of analytics and projections and deeper numbers. But at the end of the day, if a guy is a free agent on the market after he had a 12 sack season, he's going to get fucking paid. So whether he had a 14% pass rush win rate and I'm listen, I would value, I would do things very differently as a GM. I would, I was a big Bryce Huff guy, even though the sacks were never like 14 and 15, all the pressure numbers were trending upward for Bryce Huff that he is going to be, in my opinion, a 12 plus sack guy. And he's yep. very effective. But putting that aside, not everybody in the NFL is operating on that same progressive analytical mindset. They still believe in guys that get sacks, which is, I get that too. Reddick needs to go to free agency off a double digit sack season, not a season where he showed up and he accrued eight weeks and he had three and a half sacks. Ed is going to cost him so much money on the wrong side of 30. So yep. this isn't good for Hassan Reddick. It's been bad for the Jets. It's now really bad for Hassan Reddick. Everybody is drowning themselves in the deep end of the ocean here, and yep. nobody is coming out on top. And at some point, if it has to be tempered all the way down to Reddick saying, you know what, I'll come back on a one year, fully guaranteed $18 million deal. And the jets go, okay, like then just do it because yep. listen, do we, do I think right now, if you ask me to set the odds on Hassan Reddick having a sack week one, I would put it at like plus three fifty, which is insane, right? Yeah. Maybe even plus four fifty. but he needs to be rocking and rolling by the beginning of October to really have a full Hassan Reddick season that gets him to free agency which probably won't be here to get that Daniel Hunter deal. So that's my yeah. argument of why everybody, in my opinion, has played this. And Reddick's agent, like big time agent, he's gotten a lot of these things right. I think that the Jets got this wrong in the beginning, and now Reddick's gotten it wrong this far into it. And everybody's a loser in this right now. Yeah, the clock is ticking incredibly loudly. This is, you know, we're recording this Tuesday night. The next five days are sort of the last window where. You get this done and everyone sort of feels like they get out unscathed. Like you clean up whatever the fines were. That'd be great. Still has two full weeks to get ready for week one. You get a full season. We put the story behind us. It's something that people completely forget by the time the Niners game happens. Once this gets within like true game week of Jets Niners, like I don't, I don't see him signing like the Friday before kickoff, right? And, and what, it's, it's just what, nothing. It doesn't even yeah. help you for Tennessee. No. It, that And then it's like, geez, like we're really going to have to wait to October to see this team at full strength because you're also going to be waiting on Mike Williams to be at full strength. Uh, it's they, This team has a real chance, and we'll close with this. Looking at their schedule again today, they have a real chance to start 6-2 and two or 7-1. and one. Just from a pure talent perspective, those odds are so much higher if you have Redick and you have Redick right and the amount of weeks you have Mike Williams right because those eight games – you have two against the Patriots, who I think are a four-win team this year. I'm not even saying that just as a you know a Jets fan who hates the Patriots. They're, they're a four or five-win team. Jets are going to be touchdown favorites in both those games. You have a game against the Vikings who have been ravaged with injuries and are starting Sam Darnold, who's you know going to trick-or-treat and throw you a couple interceptions, and you should win that game. You're going to play the Broncos, who are probably going to win six or seven games and are probably going to be starting a rookie quarterback. The Jets defense, that's a huge advantage there. You're going to play the Titans, who, I don't know, best case, eight wins, nine wins, have a lot of holes in that roster, kind of rebuilding uh, what their previous regime was. You should be a favorite in that game. It It's just kind of – Pittsburgh, who's their quarterback? Is their offense going to be able to score they more don't, than they 10 points? They don't know points? the answer to that. Is their offense going to be able to score more than 10 points against the Jets? Like, I know it's hard to play there. I know it's a Sunday night game. I would never take that game easily. But you know what? Zach Wilson just beat the Jets in Pittsburgh, so maybe it's not that scary to play there anymore. Uh, I'm rattling these off and that's all their games. Like there, there's the, you know, the Niners game, which is going to be tough. There's a bills game, but the jets are at home and the jets have beat the bills at home the last two years with Zach Wilson, a quarterback. So the benefit of starting six and two and being a buyer at the deadline, especially when the Raiders are starting Gardner Minshew, which means their season's over and they're not doing anything of consequence this year. They're not going for it in any way. It's important. And also you want to head start because you will hit, a divot at some point when the schedule gets a little harder and that's just normal. That's how seasons are. You start six and two or seven and one. And I know I sound insane saying that, but th this has happened to the jets before. It's been a long time. They started five and zero in 2004 after they lost the opener in 2010. I think they were five and one and six and two to start the season. 
before it evened out a little bit. And it's a good thing they had that head start. They only finished 11 and five. They lost some games down the stretch. Similar to 2009, they started three and oh, they kind of evened out and it was enough from that head start to make the playoffs. So to blow that opportunity and, you know, lose a dumb game to the Vikings because you can't get home against Sam Darnold because you don't have a pass rush. It's just going to kill them later in the year if they're tied with Buffalo and Miami. And I, I, I am not, I don't say it lightly that the Jets could be six and two or seven and one to start the season. Because let's remember, they may also get the Niners without Ayuk and Trent Williams and a banged up Christian McCaffrey. And it's week one. The Niners, I'm going to pick the Niners to win that game probably very closely because they just have a much better coaching staff and they're going to know the ins and outs of everything Robert Sala and Nate Hackett want to do, which terrifies me. I hope Aaron Rodgers could overcome it. That's the uh, thing, though. If Rodgers overcomes all of that, then we all start to believe. If they win that game and don't throw a ball over themselves in Tennessee the week after for the inevitable <laughs> like, can't, Rex can't. Ryan. I won't even Rex Ryan let down Rex Ryan let down game. It, that, I mean, going into New England at 2-0 and with that building, with Rodgers' home opener, I, I, oh. there, there's a real chance here to do something special. So all this is a long-winded way to say, Figure it out with Sam Reddick and put the best product on the field possible. Thank you. War room for listening. Let me ask you something quick before we close. Do you like the Jets? I don't know how I just thought of this. Do you like the Jets home opener being on Thursday? No, I don't. Although Is I am that, going. It's very, it feels like a disservice to the fans. I, I don't. I, they don't have a normal home game until, I think we did this, it's like December. Like all yeah. of their home games are prime time. Or like in weird funky t- like most are in prime time or funky times like in the early part of the season. I don't, I don't like it. I like it. I don't mind that it's in prime time. I, Thursday night is weird. Oh, the Bron- I, I forgot the Broncos. Thank God the Broncos come it, here. That so is the, squeezed in there. The last September game is a one o'clock at MetLife. That's really the rare normal game they have at MetLife. Yeah, and then their their next ones are what they have oh a prime time game against Buffalo. A prime time. These, these are their home games. They have a prime time one against December. Buffalo. December first. I mean, it's it's insane. <laughs> they prime time. They have another Thursday nighter against the Texans. So their home schedule is insane. We were trying to talk about our like in season schedule, and I was like, we shouldn't even rush to do anything because their schedule is so different week to week. It, like they have a Monday game, a Thursday game, a Sunday night game. There's yeah. no consistency. We used to have seasons we do this where it was 17 straight weeks of one o'clock Sunday games. It couldn't be any further from that. The home opener on a Thursday night is weird. I am again. I'm biased because it works out for my schedule. I'm going to be able to. Go It'll be rocking, exciting. It'll, It'll be, be rocking. Rockin'. But Thursdays, it's a little weird. So I mean, we're almost here. I mean, we're less than three weeks from this opener, and the reality is, from the second that Aaron Rodgers didn't get up, this is what we've been counting the seconds for. There's been a you know we had some fun with the Shawshank Jets and. Free agency over panicking and the draft was a blast this year. Does he do a big game. entrance for the home opener? I know I'm really yeah. I'm really burning the midnight oil right now, but no, right? No, no. I think I th- no. He introduced flag. the defense. I think they introduced the defense. Ooh. I think that game. This is what I kind of hope. I hope they're two and zero. Oh. I think they're going to be like nine point favorites. I hope it's very. They come out like don't treat it like bu- the Super Bowl. All don't business. treat it like the Super Bowl. Yeah. Business like the shit out playing. of New England. Yep. Just win thirty to nine, thirty to yep. ten. And keep it moving and like be up early where you're just running the ball with Braylon Allen and Isaiah Davis and Brees and Rogers are chilling and you're teeing off on Drake May or Jacoby Brissett or whatever they're doing. I don't, it should not be that big thing. But the reality is there's a, there's a decent chance we're going to be one and one going into that game and really need it because divisional games matter. So we're getting ahead of ourselves, but it's the real shit. So we do is almost here as much as I'd like to talk about whether, um, you know, Codrington or Isaiah Oliver are going to be the 52nd guy in the we, roster. We go from, we go from talking about the most random UDFAs to like the deep, you know, look at the opener. That's the yeah. How show. are you, how are you converting third and seven when it's 16, 16 in San Francisco in the fourth quarter with, you know, are you putting Garrett Wilson in the slot? How's he get yeah, like, You motion yeah. him third and seven. This is a gotta have it, right? Yeah. Oh man. Third and seven, 16, 16, you're on, there's three minutes left. You're on the Niners or on your own 38 yard line, where if you don't get it, you're punting to the Niners. They're probably going to win on a field goal with no time left. And we're going to be sick for the next six days. You get the first down. It's got to be, it's got to be 11 personnel as much as I, 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 I'm a old school football man and I don't love 11 personnel with this team. It's got to be Mike Williams on the outside with Lazard on the outside 
the other way. I th- and Wilson in the slot. I think you motion Lazard tighter to the formation before the snap, and you run shallow crossing routes that Lazard kind of picks the corner that's on Garrett, and I think you leave Brees in pass pro with a late chip, and if the pick works to get Garrett freed, you throw the crossing route, which is the free first down. If the pick doesn't work and he's covered, you throw the late release to Brees. I, it sounds it sounds like poetry to me because yeah. anything that's going to Mike isolate, Williams uh, yeah. pushes the the yeah. corner take of the, the safety, off. take the top off. Anything that's going to isolate Garrett and Brees, and you give Rogers remotely anywhere or near enough time, the Jets are going to win that matchup nine yeah. out of ten times, and their best is going to be better than the other team's best a lot. The Niners are as good of a roster as they're in the league, and if you're converting that in that situation, that's a different you know, level than, than we've seen for a while. And we're, we're going to find out really quick. I think with this team, we'll spend a lot of time next week and into the week after again, when I'm recording from the Hills of the Amalfi coast um, <laughs> about, you don't have to, but I have, no, I have to, <laughs> yeah, that's a cool experience. I, how, how, who schedules a wedding going into the Jets home opener? That listen, I'm very happy they're doing a wedding in Italy. So if they are listening, I, I'm yeah, happy. I'll be no, there. I'm counting the seconds, but it's one of those you're thankful for, but you're like, damn, this is going to be tough to figure out. Yeah, I will know very quickly with this team. We will. With with how they're going to handle that matchup week one again. They could come out and lose 35 nothing week one. It does not mean that their season. No. I remember like Rogers a few years ago, right? They lost to the Saints like, did they lose to the Saints like 41 nothing week Didn't one? They and win they won like every game after that? Yeah. Something yeah. like that. So I, I just, my fear in that game is going to be the coaching. And yep. is Shanahan just in the kitchen and he's figured out some way to rip apart the Jets defense, even without Ayuk and even without Trent Williams, who still might play to be clear. And you're just like, what this team is not ready for the moment, prime time expectations. And it's just back to this, you know, are they going to start? Oh, and two, like you're going to Tennessee. It's a tough team. They have no expectations. We're talking ourselves in insane circles here, but plenty Three more, more to come. Two more, <laughs> two more weeks. Think more three. content on the feed going in. Reaction of the preseason game. Preview of the preseason game will hit this weekend. Uh, flight plan starting next week. BadlandsToj.com for merch. Thank you, War Room. Keep the chatter coming in the Discord. I'm going to see Bruce Springsteen Friday in Philly. If you happen to be there, come say hi. I'll be probably wearing a greetings from Asbury Park tank top like no 37-year-old nice. dad should, but I'll be out there doing it. Um, thank you, everyone, and we will uh, talk to you soon. Thank you.